as artists, we're kind of, I would consider like creative athletes in a sense. We have to keep sharp our mindsets. We have to be healthy, but then also like expose goodness into the world. Cause like a lot of attention is on us now too. They, they look at us for like shoe collaborations. Yeah. Like, like they used to be all athletes, but it went, it went from athletes to musicians and now artists. Yes. The multidisciplinary creative that has taken its unique perspective and shaped it into collaboration with the likes of New Balance, a Bathing Eight, and Nickelodeon and the hometown Chicago Cubs. This conversation is going to be equal parts interesting and inspiring. Now let's jump into our conversation with the great Louis de Guzman. Today we have a special guest from the art world, one of my favorite artists, Chicago-born, Filipino-American, the infamous Louis de Guzman. What's up, bro? Welcome. Thank you for having me, guys. No doubt. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Louis, let's start off just easy, man. Tell us, tell us how you got here. Man, just being that kid that never gave up on what he really wanted to do. I think for me, it was like growing up in the western suburbs of Chicago. I was like a, one of probably four Filipino kids in my high school, the quiet Asian oh, wow. kid they would call it, and we're like, hey, <laughs> like, you know, I, I was just always into art, you know, and that was like my escape to kind of like communicate with people was creating work and just being good at drawing class, pretty much, and kind of like amounting to something that like I believed in as a kid. My parents always kind of pushed forward for them being immigrants. It was like, Hey, like you're the first born in the U S like we need you to like, just live out your dreams. And it's always been like that. And you normally hear the opposite, you know, you're, you're the first generation. So you have to be successful. So you can only limit your options of what you can do as an adult, you know, doctor, lawyer, you got to be successful. And, you know, there's a higher percent of chance that those fields will produce more than, you know, art. And so when, when did you know you were good at art? I think I knew, I want to say sixth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think it was sixth grade. Cause uh, I had this story that like, I was in art class and my teacher was like, Hey, we're going to have like an all middle school art show. And I did this painting with Q-tips or so something different. And I went on family vacation. So I missed the art show and I came back. She's like, Oh, you won first place out of like the sixth, seventh, eighth graders. I was like, Oh, that's that's tight. Okay, cool. But I think it was more so, I think not really knowing, but just feeling that I was like, this is what I really love to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think every day we just try, you know, want to try to get better. And I followed it up by asking, where was that breaking point? Where was that moment where you knew like I'm right there on the cusp? And if I can just get over this hump, I can really pursue this. When was that moment? I think that moment was um, man, I want to say junior year of high school, junior year of high school. I knew that I would like really want to pursue this. It was me with my counselor, you know, my, you know, every kid has a counselor in, in school and it's like, Hey, like, you know, ACTs are coming up. What do you want to go to school? And, you know, we see that you're really progressive in this. And my counselor at the time was like, Hey, you know, there's a, there's a profession that you could go into called graphic design. I'm like, Oh, what is that? Cause I was always, into, I was always into fashion sneakers and like, mm -hmm. In high school, I like would literally trade up for my brother's Jordans, like yeah. wearing like fives and stuff. I'm like, man, like how can I get those fives? How can I get these pieces? And it's like you just gotta trade me up, like you know, work hard and see what you can do here. And pretty much like I was always into things that kids in the suburbs that weren't really put up on, you know. And I would, you know, hitch rides with my brother and his friends, like St. Alfred and leaders at the time. Yeah, so Arthur, coming to the city, yeah. you know, a chance the, to rapper all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. at that time it was like coming to Joe the city Fresh from. Fresh. from um the suburbs it was like yo like i'm, I'm i want to know more about this yeah. and i just started drawing throwing graphics on t-shirts and next thing you knew i was like oh man like i i really love this and people started asking me for like freelance work at the time and it just kind of took off from there did it ever cross your mind that you would be able to do what you're doing now in a sense of you yeah. went from being a sneakerhead to you know, a hype beast in a sense to designing for, you know, New Balance, having your own 574, working with Bapesta. And where you going along those lines? Was that something in the back of your head that you wanted to do? Were you infamous of like a tinker, Any, anybody like that? Or was it just like, you just like creating? I just like creating, you know? And I think like, you know, from Bape, like to Nego and the Nego and Pharrell starting BBC after that. And these brands, I was like so immersed into street culture. And I felt like I was onto something or knew about something. Cause like me being from the suburbs, you know, there were kids who look like are Filipino, but their families told them to pursue engineering, nursing, doc doctors. And my family always pushed me to like, hey, do what you love. And it was art. 
Yeah. And I think I didn't know, you know, I had no <laughs> idea. And I still kind of pitch myself every day. I'm like, oh, I get to work with these brands that I used to look up to, you know? And I think it's like a testament to not giving up and still kind of having that same mindset because mm. there's kids today who kind of like, if it doesn't hit quickly for them, they want to continue like to like, all right, I'm going to try something else. And mm. I always tell people like, yo, just keep your foot on the gas. You never know where it's going to go because you're still going to keep progress like progressing and moving forward. Right, right. And you think that's something, we always talk about uh, guns and butter, which is like the, people think it's a macroeconomic principle, but it's yeah. basically, uh, you know, a scene from the movie Baby Boy, you know, with Ty Re Reese yeah. and Vinny Reigns. I don't know if that outdates you, but discuss a little, you know, micro decisions that you made in a certain situation that paid off huge in the long run. Do you think it was something in regards? I heard your mother was a, yeah. you know, you might have got your love from creation because your mother was a, a, was a florist? Yeah, she worked yes. on flowers on the weekends. You know, okay. she, wow. Yeah, my mom worked in like the nursing home realm as like an activity director. Okay, nice. You know, Monday through Friday, but back in the day, like she would like find other ways that she could make money on the side, you know, because, you know, coming here from the Philippines, they didn't really have much. Yeah. And so from her, it was like, what can I do? And craft shows and working with flowers and her own thing was like her escape and what she loved to do to kind of put art out there. So she took me to these craft shows. Yeah. I would sit there and for me to like, you know, cause I was too young to be by myself at the house. So yeah. she would take me with her, That's right. no one would babysit me. And for her to keep me busy, I would just sit there and she would bring a sack of paper. And I would just draw anything I saw. Yeah. So it really got me into like, oh, this is, you know, this is what you like to do. This is what you're good at. So. She plays a big role still to this day. And I think like it's paying attention to those moments, kind of yeah. like like indulging yourself and not like, you know, just kind of seeing what's beyond the hobby, yeah. beyond the love of it. And, and, and in the end, you're doing like a 10,000 hour effect. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you're yeah. getting, before you know it, she's making a, you're watching a master at work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. you're just putting your 10,000 hours. And like, much like us, we've had tons of times to just go out and hoop and dribble and, you know, people say like, yo, how are you guys so tall and you're able to handle the ball and stuff? And it's like, no, we fell in love with the game and I, we were outside naturally dribbling every single day. So nobody was like, yo, you're gonna become a great ball handler and a point forward and go be a four time NBA champion and yeah. do some shit where now you're passing it to the sh one of the best shooters ever. It's like, no, you, you ended up working on your craft and honing it. And uh, like we said last, you know, pot, you know, uh, when you learn, that's where innovation comes from. So. Yeah, it's, it's like your self-discipline. Yeah. Like imagine those, imagine those times you guys were kids, like being by yourself with a basketball, like on the court, no one watching you, just having these dreams in your head. Yeah. I'm the same way too. It's like yeah. I grew up in the like, you know, just being in the suburbs in a bedroom drawing, mm -hmm. getting excited about something. Like if I saw something I liked, I like literally stepped back. I'm like, whoa, this is fire. Yeah. You know, being being your own hype man, being excited, but like also staying grounded and like knowing that like you can get better every day. Uh, like you're not like settling for where you are now, but you want to get better as you keep moving uh, forward. What was your breakout moment where that this was my play or this was my piece that opened the eyes of the folks you've been working with? You know, what piece was that that opened New Balance's eyes or Bapes' eyes? Or I really want to talk about Nick, Nickelodeon. Oh, but yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's oh, what yeah, I want to talk about. That's that, big time. But what bro. was your what was your breakout <laughs> piece? Man, I think, well, it's funny that you say Nickelodeon. And so the breakout piece, I would say 2015, 16, I had just moved back from Los Angeles. And, you know, I was still doing design work for RCB Gallery and just Don, you know, okay, Don, yeah. Don's yeah, a big brother. And, you know, and like okay. learned so much from yeah. him and the, the family energy. over there that like they, yeah. you know, just working under them and going back to the micromanaging of like, how do you take things in? I just kind of like stuck to be like, all right, I'm going to take everything in and, and ask questions, keep asking questions, keep learning. I moved back to Chicago from LA and um, it was, it was a friend's birthday and I was like working on this, like uh, this Homer Simpson drawing just for fun. And I had never used color before that. Like I always did black and white sketch work mm -hmm. with my style, but it wasn't as like intricate as it is now. And I applied color and like painted it up and I took a photo, put it on Instagram. And next thing you know, everyone's like, this is crazy. What is this? And I just kept going. I'm like, let me just keep, doing the other characters of because i love the simpsons like every yeah. day after school yeah. come home yeah. at five watch it on fox yeah. like what am i gonna do yeah. so i did that and i kept doing that for like four or five weeks and it kept getting traction on instagram i just go to kinko's and get prints made of these little drawings and prints and uh i don't know if you guys know drew the barber no cuts no glory Drew's yeah. the big homie. yeah he he dm'd me and shout out to drew he dm'd me he's like hey like i love your work like would you want to do a show at my barber shop so then we took those prints and we did a show at No Cuts, No Glory, the original location. 
Damn. you know, and because of Drew and his and his family and them, like they really believed in what I was doing. And it kind of just led to the next thing and took a swing. And from there, it was creating that uh, Elevate sculpture, the Bart Simpson mm -hmm. yeah. sculpture, which then led to Nickelodeon. Yeah. Oh, oh, so that wow. led to Nickelodeon. Then, yeah, when they okay. saw that, it led to um, this woman, uh, Glenda Beltran. She was at ComplexCon, and we debuted that at ComplexCon. Yep. And she's like, this is crazy. Like, what is this? I'm like, this is just a, you know, a geometrical sculpture that based on these illustrations. And she's like, you have to work on SpongeBob. It's the anniversary next year. And I was like, say less. Like, let's do it. Did you understand the magnitude of that? At or Because sometimes I think we do it as athletes. Sometimes we don't know who we are because the systems around us, they dumb our genius down. Yeah. So we don't realize our full potential. And so they benefit most when we don't realize our full potential. Absolutely. That's just every arena. And and so for you, did you realize how big of a moment that was? Like Nickelodeon is huge. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, I was just excited. Because how yeah. old were you at this time? This was three years ago. I was 29, 29. Okay, okay. Yeah. So and it was like, I don't know, it was it was a whole thing. I'm like, whoa, like this is crazy. You know, like it it, it wasn't I didn't realize how big it big it was because like for me it's like when I get prompted for something, without even talking about the deal or even having the real call, it was just word of mouth exchange and here's like an orange card that says Nickelodeon. And it was like, yo, guys, like I think we're about to work on SpongeBob. Wow. And we get back to Chicago literally two days later and I'm emailing her with my manager, Austin Neely. And we're like, yo, can we take a call? And um, next thing you knew, I was like, I, that was the same night I got to meet Jay Balvin, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. So Jay yeah. was like, yo, yeah, like, so okay. I met him in passing. So I yeah. met Jose first. Jose came up to the booth like, yo, your art's crazy. And we switched contacts. And then Glenda, like an hour later, Glenda Beltran came up. She's like, this is crazy. I work for Nickelodeon. I would love to work with you. And before that, Jay's like, when we're at the booth, Jay's like, oh, we should do something together. So I get back to Chicago. I'm at Lifetime on the treadmill. And I get a call from Glenda. And it's like, hey, let's do this. And then I like text Jay Balvin. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, I have this opportunity <laughs> with Nickelodeon. Would you want to work on SpongeBob? He's like, say less. And then we, that's when we made it like a three-way collaboration. Wow. Just by persistence and chance. Thank you. That's Thank great. You persistence and chance. So, so, so obviously... Nickelodeon was a huge deal, and you didn't know that at the time, but were there moments like when the Cubs, your Chicago kid, when the Cubs came knocking, yeah. were you like, man, now this is getting serious, or was it like the bathing ape situation or some so much of like, new, like to have a New Balance shoe is crazy, because yeah. right now Nike does their thing, but if you're really steezed up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. You feel what I'm saying? Like New Balance is really like that. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think... Um, one thing my mom always tells me to this day, like, keep your feet on the ground, you know, like take it all in, enjoy it, share it, but don't like let it get over your head. And I, I've always been like that. I just think for me, I just love what I do so much that I just want to keep doing it and experimenting and taking new ideas that I've always had. But now this is the platform to make those ideas come to life. Yeah, but you know, and I think it's like you might have like plays in your head that you want to run and all of a sudden you're like, yo, like, let me do this like for this game. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So but now it's like for me, it's like things that I had in my back pocket when I was a kid or a teenager, I'm able to apply those now, years later. Well, discuss your style because, uh, you know, one thing that's noticeable, you like a lot, you went from doing black and white to, you know, a lot of colors and but your style is mostly abstract. What made you, you know, fall in love with kind of yeah. that type of situation? Like a lot of people do different types of, you know, no, sneezes. I mean, it's just experimenting, but I think a lot of it was being at these crash shows with my mom, you know, she was like the only like Filipino lady in a room full of Caucasian women. Yeah. And they would have like intricate blankets, woven tapestries and patterns. And I love drawing patterns and details. And then I just started to mess around with it where I like, if I were to like take like a tapestry, but break it apart and those little shards of shapes, yep. how can I bring it to life and form something? So that's like what really broke it off. And then for me, it's like, okay, how can I apply this to things that I love? Like nostalgic yeah. things. And now it's, I'm in a mind space where like, I like to create things that really are going to kind of build a world around what people are used to seeing. Hmm. Now, here's a, something I'm trying to figure out and learn. So I've gotten into art. Uh, obviously, Evan, best friend, uh, but a couple of other friends, you know, uh, shout out to Kendall Hearns, who's yeah. in the art space. You know Kendall. Kendall yeah. Art oh, okay. House. Shout out Art House. Yeah, shout out Art House. Yeah. Be more on them, dude. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but one part I just can't figure out. And I've heard there's been some, this has been a touchy subject in our spaces. How do you value yourself? 
in the art space, there's no telling who's saying what's worth what. You know what I mean? So what's a process like in determining your value, how much you charge, you know, uh, depending on who you're working with? I think for me being in such a medium realm of like what what we apply of like materials when it comes to sculpture, like bronze, casted, like it, we're not lying, like it costs this much to produce, you know? And then like, how can we charge about the time? Mm -hmm. It really depends, honestly. And like, I think like, as artists grow, their work tends to grow and get more um, in demand. People start asking for more, you know? Yeah. Sometimes like, I'll be honest, like when we get tracked down for paintings, like we don't have any to sell people because our inventory is so low. Yeah. You know, I can only produce so much at a time with a team, but it's like, yo, like, what do you have? What can we make? What can we buy? So I think to your question, like your answer for your question is like, it's like about, I think, elevating the quality of the work. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Like you'll look at uh -huh. something and like the longevity of the work and the artist too. But it's like, as artists like myself in the space so new, we're still sharpening our tools, sharpening the quality of the work mm -hmm. that like, you know, before maybe it was like a $2,000 painting, but gratefully we've been able to sell paintings for 15 to 30K, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the medium and the size. Um, it's funny because I joke around with my, like, well, not joke around, but like my best friend, Austin Neely, who's my manager as well. Like I've known him for years and, you know, he's very key on like making sure that we price it correctly and fairly, you know, yeah, it's like right. per square footage and like, you know, yeah. et cetera. But, you know, I think for me, we put, I put so much pride into what I do that like when people ask me like, oh, how much is it worth or how much, it's like asking how much I'm worth. It's my life. Right. Yeah. That's you know, right. like I'm doing this every day. Like I'm dedicating my time, my brain power, energy and thought process to make things that I enjoy and a job for artists. And, you know, for you guys as well, it's like we make people happy. Yeah. You know, you can't pay for happiness. You just you have to you have to earn it and yeah. be in a spot where not even earn it. Like everyone can be happy. You just got to choose to be. It's just yeah. what you resonate towards to. OK, I do want to invest in this because I'm investing in goodness. And I yeah. think for me as an artist, like I. I love that people come up to me like, hey, like your work makes me happy. I've had people, I was just at a convention in November at Designer Con in Los Angeles. I had this like older gentleman who's probably like 15 years older than me. He's like, during the pandemic, I worked in finance. My son and I happened to watch a, you know, a work from home. My son and I watched a YouTube video about collector toys and I saw you come up. And ever since then, I decided to leave my job in finance and pursue art. Oh, wow. That to me is what more than money can ever pay for and buy. I want to tap on that because you spoke on elevating, you know, your craft, your work. But right now, just go, a guy going to, you know, museums and stuff and seeing, you know, some of that contemporary stuff and some of yeah. the older arts that they say is the most valuable. Yeah. Right now we're in a space in a lane where it's open, where you're able to elevate the culture, like you just told the story of. And um, you speak on how big of a deal that is because right now the street where the hype beasts and fashion and sports and art is at an all time high. Oh, and, it's crazy. And even media wise, we call our production new amendment. And it's like, we're able to tell a new story, a new yeah. narrative. So like discuss that to be able to be one of the newer guys really making a splash and thank you. No. And, 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 and making art that really relates to our culture and it's, Doing a huge splash across, no. you know, every demographic. No, thank you. I mean, honestly, it's such a humbling feeling, but it's like we have like these like this uh, responsibility to create things that can help shift the culture. Yeah. But like, I think it's about not being afraid of our ideas. And for me, it's like I've always had these ideas. I was always af I was afraid at once because I was always such a shy person. Yeah. But now I'm like, I feel so confident knowing that like whatever we do, whatever we make, like it'll help shift or kind of attract that one other two people to do that too. So it's about not just like us, not even, I wanna say controlling the narrative, being a part of this big community that's growing and also like making sure that it's still alive, yeah. adding fuel to the fire because with kids these days, they have everything at the palm of their hands. They could look at a painting or look at a sculpture or experience something in a second with like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes I find out things before, like about myself or people find out things about themselves before they even know about them about themselves. Yeah. It's like, right. wait, what? You know, I think it's our responsibility to kind of like keep adding more good fuel into the fire as yeah. artists, you know, and for you guys to support brands, like obviously you got fresh sneakers on, you got infinite archives on, you know, you got like, no, it's just like, of... it all comes full circle. You know, it's like, as artists, we're kind of, I would consider like creative athletes in a sense. We have to keep sharp our mindsets. We have to be healthy, but then also like expose goodness into the world. Cause like a lot of attention is on us now too. They, they look at us for like shoe collaborations. Yeah. Like 
like they used to be all athletes, but it went from, from athletes to musicians and yes. now artists. Yes. yes. And that's you know dope. what I'm saying? Yes. It's dope. Yeah. Dope, artists dope. and fashion designers. Like mm. it went from yes. being a Michael Jordan to being whomever you are and mm. be, having a heart and like pursuing mm. that. Mm. So discuss the creative process. You hear a lot of yeah. different artists, like yeah. or even just Tarantino. He might you hear him <laughs> up in a Las Vegas hotel room, five women, blow, and just creating. Jesus. He said so, N-word a bunch of times. Yeah, and the N-word a bunch of times <laughs> yeah, as well. Jesus. And uh that's how he came up with Django, I guess. Yeah. 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 So so I'm wondering, like, what's your creative process? Is it something where you you know you go out and just walk around and be like, I saw this, this is dope, or do you just lock yourself in a room and create? I lock myself either in a room in my home or in a studio. And mm -hmm. I just like to have good conversations. Like right now, this is the creative process. Oh, okay. I can go back to the studio Monday and be like, oh, this is what I took in from this talk with, you know, Andre and Evan like this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's my creative process is communication. Mm -hmm. My creative process is understanding where I am now and appreciating where, what we have now. That's thinking about like what I've been through and like the things that I am, am thinking and want to see. And currently it's funny that you asked that because now I'm like, I'm working on this new body of work that's like completely opposite from what people are used to seeing from me. I'm actually like expanding more to be building a world, like a one, like a wonderment universe that like will take you on a journey and discover these new things that you'll like find. So my process for that was just like living life honestly right now. And just like, being curious, yeah. you know, like even like looking out the window as we talk, like we're in Chicago in the middle of, a, of the, the best cities in the world. In the world. Yeah. That's all the inspiration I need and the process I need. I think the process for me is like honing in and like being disciplined too. You yeah. know, like my girlfriend will tell you whether she like I'm up, up early trying to get the work done and trying to like really be like disciplined. Like I treat myself like I'm like, all right, we got a game tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. You know? Beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, you know. I want to ask you about, you know, we always ask all our guests the same question and we get it, totally different answers. Yeah. Suffering from your success. Mm -hmm. So as an athlete, you know, you get thrown a bunch of money early in your life. And we have no idea what to do with it. And it leads to a lot of trauma and just navigating different evils of the world. Yeah. Um, and that's all from your success. Like who would have thought you get to where you want to be and then there's a lot of sadness in it. Or there's yeah, a lot of like, you know, thing. family, you know, especially when the money comes in. So how has success affected you in a negative way, if any way? Um, negative way, I'll say personally, being harder on myself mentally. That's real. That's real. You know, I'll be real. Like, it's like yeah, I, perform. I pride myself yeah. in always being, I've always been an optimistic person. I've always been grounded because my family is like, you know, hearing about my cousins in the Philippines or hearing about mm -hmm. my family, like, We've never even stepped foot in the US. Like that keeps me focused in on like why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I have a bloodline of people who weren't able to even sit in a nice place to have an interview. Weren't able to have a clean glass of water like we just had when we walked in. Yeah. So for me, it's like, it hurts because sometimes it's like, oh, like this mental capacity of mine is like, it's, it's aging, I'm getting older, we're getting yeah. older. You know, all this success is great, but it, it hurts sometimes because you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we're alone. Like we, we go to sleep alone, like our heads, we're just like in our own headspace. And I think like it affects because it's like as sporadic as our thoughts are, it keeps, it doesn't stop. Yeah. I think it was not so much of a negative thing or it is, but I'm learning to like control that even more, you know, all honesty. Right, right. I think we do that as athletes a lot. Like I, there's been times where I got home and was like, yo, if I don't get this buttoned up, it's, it's closed curtains. Because you can't mentally continue to beat yourself up. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you expect just more out of yourself. But I think you do need to have some sort of edge where you hold yourself to high expectations. Absolutely. You know? that's, yeah. That's what you're striving for. And so, you know, uh, I appreciate that because that's just beautiful to hear. Um, on, on a lighter note, I would like to know um, what's been your favorite collab thus far? That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think, damn. Um, it's like asking you, like when you won the first one, like how do you feel? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's higher. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The like, first one, you so you so the first one is you so stupid, you have no idea what just happened, because you don't really. The first one's so hard because you don't quite know what it's like to win it, so you don't know what it takes. So yeah. you're just like, in the last two minutes or like an hour. So you're like, yo, we're up nine with two minutes. The game's supposed to be over. Now it's only, it's like, man, wow. it's 150 on the clock, bro. I swear we just had the ball for like 
two minutes. How's only 10 seconds went by? Wow. This, another 10 seconds take forever. I'm like, why is this game taking so long? <laughs> it took forever. And then finally the buzzer, and I was like, is it over yet? We can, we can, we can celebrate? And then it's like, <laughs> wait, what did we do now? And so after the first one, I've had other teammates where like our third one was their first one. They did the same thing. They were like, what, what happens now? Like you just have no clue. And so there's, there's different ones. Different reactions to, to different championships, so it's kind of funny. But I guess this is a question I thought about. Is there a collab that you're dreaming about or, like, your, like your a dream collab? For, yeah, what's a championship for you? Yeah, your collab, collab or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Repeat, yeah. I think going to what you said about the first one, and for me, it's, like, every collab we've done, every project we've done has been a dream. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, like, they're all my favorite because they've all took place in different moments in my life that I'm here now. Mm -hmm. And I know how to accept that, you know, but I think for my dream collab, it, I mean, I, I can't even say I, I, a fashion house would be crazy, you know, like we've gotten to do. Good know, shout, Yeah. Shout out to, you shout do out to a point forward collab, get some coats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Some shoes. Yeah. I, like I think, um, I think for me, it's, um, it would, it would be a front facing collaboration that would be a very, like a permanent structure in a major city. I would love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I would love yeah, yeah. that. Like, I love what we get to do on a scale of four or five feet. But if we could do something that's like a building size or something one day, then that's essentially like a fashion club, but a front facing like public uh, installation. Yeah. I got something would, for you. That would be it. Uh, I'll do some work with Teach Inspire. Oh. Man. All right, all right. After this, we gotta talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta talk, yeah, we gotta talk yeah, after yeah, this. We gotta yeah. talk after this. But yeah. that would to me would be everything because I think for me. As I said earlier about like what I love to do and what I've learned that I love so much about what I get to do with the team every day is like we keep it between us, you know, shout out to Austin Neely and Amy Tran, like we keep it within the studio and within us and these ideas that we share on group text and what we really passionate about, but then we share it to the world and to the masses and have people tag me in places I've never even been to. I've never even been to Japan, but we got to work with Babe. You know, I haven't been to, to France. I've never been to Paris. Damn, so I really? Have to go. Yeah, you never been to Japan? Never been to Japan. Uh, I mean, Japan? Go now. I know, yeah, I, go now, yeah. Hey, Dave, I, know I gotta go. I, I just this. went, so yeah. it blew my mind. You worked That's with right. Bape and never went to Japan? We got to work with Bape and never went to Japan. That's why You gotta negotiate better. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, like, I think I, I, my dream would just to be to create something public facing that will continue to inspire other people. Mm and have these kids probably reach higher than I've ever reached. Yeah. That's that's the dream. That's the dream yeah. collab right there. I think, I guess to follow up on that, where do you want your art to be remembered in like 20 or 30 years? I just watched the Basquiat yeah. you know, documentary. I was able to go to his exhibit in Brooklyn. But how do you want, you know, in, in a perfect world in 40, 50 years, when you're done and, you know, sitting back, how do you want your, your art to be remembered? Like what's the, the narrative that you want to, to paint? That, you know, everybody say. Yeah, absolutely. I think I want my art to trigger a sense of imagination. I want to trigger a sense of enjoyment, of curiosity. I think when people see it, I want to feel like it's the first time they're seeing something like that for the first time. Mm. That, like, nothing is replicated. It just feels so new to them that, like, I want that, like, 13, 18-year-old kid to see when I'm, like, nine, like 80, 90, and they look at my piece for the first time, they're like, this is fire. Yeah, I want to share this with the world. Like, I want people to, I want that. It got me thinking. Uh, I read a lot on, you know, how different uh, generations are thinking and purchasing and interacting with one another and the G Gen Z, X, millennial, all those. But we're at this breaking point <laughs> where we've had a group of kids. Uh, my son fits in this bucket, 15, where, you know, they got caught. You're in high school or middle school in the pandemic and your social interactions are totally different. Yeah. But it's really changing the way they interact with one another, the way they transact, yeah. it's changed everything. As an artist, are you in tune with these things? Because I'm asking because I did read something like yesterday, recently, it was saying they're starting to get away from their cell phones. Like they're realizing their cell phones aren't good for them. So they're going back to flip phones. Oh, wow. You know? I know and then they're, they're starting to buy <laughs> like clothes that. differently, you know, they're in dressing terms. More, yeah. Right. And they're like, they're being more conscious of how we're affecting, you know, the earth you know, greenhouse effects or, yeah. you know, how much water's wasted with genes. Like what food they're consuming. Right. Yeah. You know, are there anything that you're paying close attention to, not to change the way you do art, but just keeping a close ear to the ground and, and what people are looking at and looking for? Um, I'm seeing that a lot of artists and, you know, um, they're, they're starting to explain more. 
their pieces, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think like I've always had like they're trying to they're trying to like add more context to their visuals because these kids are looking at it and like they might think one thing, but the artist always trying to interpret something else. And I think for me it's like I think more explanation. You know, mm -hmm. the kids love to like you said, get away from cell phones, but they do more research now. They like to read. My nephew just turned six today. Um oh, and he's sharp as a it's crazy. Like this kid is like excelled and what i wasn't that excelled in kindergarten yeah. i don't remember being that excelled right, right. And he's just like knows everything and i'm yeah. like yo like you're way you're too smart for how like you just turn you know and i think like i'm thinking about it now it's like i think as artists like we're getting more we're prompted for, to do things that are more um like have more meaning to it i, I mean every art has meaning and mm -hmm. everyone has has something to say and i think for me it's like okay like i want to keep my ear to the ground and of, of explaining more having more context having more positive feedback and like things that i can like tell somebody more like more things to read i guess what artist is, has influenced you the most and it doesn't have to be a specific artist in terms of it's probably you know, on paper artists. but i mean like it could be a music artist or an athlete like who's influenced you uh the most in your work uh, i'm gonna say i don't want to sound corny or my mom actually that's dope no that's i that's love real. that yeah my mom yeah. because all of her love and things that are around, like it triggers me to like, oh, I like this. Her like knickknacks and antiques and stuff that she loves to collect or like mm -hmm. still hold on to, that's influenced me a lot because I still put it forward to this day. Like we shot a New Balance commercial last year mm -hmm. and it like the second shoe we did revolved around her, you know, and she was in it, you know, it was like yeah. hers, Madavinas, we called it Madavinas, the 574, after named after her. Wow. And it was cool to like bring that whole thing full circle. And I think she's my favorite artist. Um, because she, you know, birthed me and was able to like hand me the tools and give me the tools to create. So a lot of people, when you get done with your work, is that one person that you rush to show and like get her response and say, look, is that the person that you test all your new ideas out on? Or if she um, responds genuinely happy, is that what you're like, yo, I got one. Actually, yeah, it was funny because I actually showed her something that I'm working on, like the new body of work I was telling you guys about. I showed yeah. her like an initial sketch. And she's like, that's different and like in a good way. She's like, that's ah. awesome. You know, but obviously I show the team first, but like for her, like her or my girlfriend, Lily, like I'll show them first before like get the initial reaction. Cause like they, they spend so much time with me and they see me, you know, all the time. So it's like, if you know who I am and it's just like, does this feel genuine for my soul? They can feel your work. They can feel you in your work. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so yeah. is that how you sometimes that's communicate cool. through yeah, to her? That's, that's how I communicate. You know, that's like, hard, this is, bro. Like the initial reaction, is that fire? You know, that's why I love my team so much. You know, like they they know me so well. Like my best friend is my manager. Like I've known him. We've worked together for years. Like it's been over a decade and he knows me, yeah. you know. And then my one of my best friends, a good friend, Amy Tran, like works with us too. And she's amazing. And she's a great assistant and really kills it in the game. And she knows me too. I've known mm -hmm. her since I was like 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So it's like people who know me and feel like how I am and genuine enough, yeah. they'll keep me locked in and be like, all right, this is fire. Let's yeah. keep going. So last question. What, what piece of art did you create that you think is mostly you where you're like, yo, I laid my heart on this. Like if I had to describe it, like, yeah, I like that one. Like, I like that question. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, what would you describe? Uh, up you better be having this ready. Yeah, yeah. upcoming we'll piece out. that we're actually oh, dropping we soon. We ain't gonna have that one. Yeah, uh, upcoming piece we're, we're dropping soon uh, called Moving Parts 001. It's a multifunctional sculpture. It's a flower vase slash incense chamber. So it acts as two things. It's double functioning. Okay. So it's, it's a flower vase and... Incense chamber. Oh! You yeah, you're able to... ashtray too. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're able to... Yeah, that's, yeah. A good idea. Yeah, that's a great I idea. Ask me to talk later. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because my one of my friends saw that I was like yo this makes for this I'm like nah 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 this, this is what it's for but it's it's extremely me because it brings cues from my childhood yeah things that I grew up with like flowers like my mom and stuff yeah. and I love scents too so it's like you're able to control the narrative like this thing is my favorite because it, they come in two meter colors put it in your home and you're able to control the way it looks by, based on the color the flowers you pick for the color palette and the scent of your room based on the scent you choose to light up so at the same time it's like so you're obsessed with flowers and you chose a lily yeah exactly Fate. that's, that's big time good for you you living right bro for sure i like that yeah uh, tell me tell me about your wild side you, you too humble that's what i'm saying so like where do you create from it's something you know like like okay so like steph curry right <laughs> <laughs> Steph Curry's like a perfect human being, right? And sometimes I'm like, bro, you gotta have some weird fetish or something. 
<laughs> like, there's something weird about you. What's the weirdest thing about you? Weirdest thing about me? <laughs> I don't have, I don't honestly, no. Nah, that's, that's good. That's good. No. I'll be honest. Like, I'm, it's funny because people are like, oh, like, I remember one of the first shows I had in Chicago. Someone came up to me. He's like, yo, you must do a lot of something. I was like, right. nah. <laughs> like, I'm high on my own mind supply. Like, that's I don't, dope. I don't do, I, I, you know, I'm nothing against that stuff. I just, I just never indulge in it, you know? I think what, what my weirdness is, is just like, I'm still the same person I was. Like, I don't switch up for anybody. You know, I keep it true, you know? Um, but I will say, like, yeah, I'm, I have a big obsession with, like, Disney and Walt Disney. Like, I do a lot of research. Okay. You watch Atlanta? Atlanta? Yeah. Childish Gambino? I have, yeah, I have. Yeah. That's one of the best oh, shows. Okay, I want you to watch the last season's episode on Goofy. Oh, I got yeah. to see Oh, yeah. That. Oh, I haven't <laughs> seen that. Story Goofy. Yeah, that was a great movie. Is that a good one? TV show. That's a great TV show. watched that one episode. Yeah. And it was... Uh, <laughs> Disney hired a black man to be the creative director and he started creating their characters. After, <laughs> he started making them black characters and Goofy was like a black guy and how he had to like navigate through the Disney cartoon world as a black guy, like the minority. And Goofy was the word translated for nigga. Oh, damn. But it's incredible. It's, it, it feels like a real story. Like when you're watching, like, wait, this really happened? I got to Googling, like, this really happened? That's what Everyone I did. was. Yeah. Everyone was Googling because they thought it was a real story. That's how it's crazy. That's Until crazy. he did a Tootsie Roll, that's when I knew it wasn't real. Once he started doing a Tootsie Roll, why he did? Goofy dance like that. Are you right? <laughs> you never know, bro. That's crazy. Once again, Lewis, I appreciate you. Thanks for pulling yeah, up. Thank you guys for having me, man. Man, keep creating. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get Dre a gift of one of the one of your toys or next uh, installation. And yeah, I'm yeah, when keep... you guys are, have time back here in Chicago, your studio's not that far from here, so you guys are more welcome. Yeah, we will be there. We're going to pull up, bro. We're actually going to pull up yeah, and, sure. and pull do up. a little extra yeah. for sure. Yeah. That'll be yeah, lit. Yeah, thank you for the time, man. I'm no. looking forward to it. Uh, make Thanks. size 16s, y'all. <laughs>